You got to, yeah, I better not see you again. You get my drift? <laughs> I, not see, I better not see your ass again. Oh, yeah, poor Hannah. She was just taken aback because she thought this was going to be like a thing, this big emotional drama. I'm like, I'm sorry. If you need this to be more emotional, it can be that way, but I don't care. Oh, that poor kid. I just I took the wind out of her thunder. What are you doing? Hey, it, it happens though. It happens though. I had a friend I had this. It was like a similar situation where they were like trying to come out, and we were both super duper duper high. And he looks over at me. He's like, "You know, I'm gay, right?" And I look at him, stone stoned out of my mind, red eyes. I'm like, "Yeah, you carry a purse." <laughs> <laughs> And he just, he just, he just nods. He's just, oh, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I said, I said the one thing I think that could be like the most hurtful at that moment, and I feel kind of bad because I was like, you think you're hiding it better than you are. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> you really, you like really convinced that they're like <laughs> surprise. You it's... couldn't, you couldn't notice, could you? No, I noticed. <laughs> yeah. The what, like this is news? <laughs> yeah, oh, 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 I mean, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> well, not that shocked. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if your little ass knows what to do here. Like, you thought, what do you think? This was a secret? Every time we play, like, every time we play an anime game, you want to look at the girls and rate their appearance. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, kid. <laughs> If you really thought you was hiding it, you're doing a piss poor job. You would, I, that's why you were bad at hide and seek. <laughs> ma'am, you, you're, ma'am, we're we're looking at the animes and you're talk you're talking about waifus and not husbandos. Come on, yeah. come Jeez. on. First first swing of the day that I knew that was that was a fact. Oh, I love my kid. I really do. I love her so much because she was just, oh, that poor little sweet thing was just, oh, dad knows. I was like, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Every time there's an anime yeah. game, you're like, oh, look, it's a pretty girl's dad. You're like, use me as an excuse. <laughs> Which, like, respect. That's what I would do. <laughs> they're like, oh, mom, check out this game. Aren't the guys hot? And it's like, why is my son like, taking it at the hot guy? Oh, he's right. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Like, come the hell on. Kiddo. Whew. I still, I still, I just can't. I was like, I'm like waiting for something real nasty to come out of her mouth. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like waiting for something terrible. Heck. Uh, by the way, if you are listening to this live and you think that my kid coming out to me is uh, terrible, you can go. Uh, yeah, uh, we can get to fund it tonight. Uh, you can go yourself. Come on now. To be defunded, we have to have been funded. That's true. You do have to have been funded. And guess what, <laughs> motherfucker? We are not. Ooh, that took us off the air for a second, too. I've. I could, oh yeah, single hit. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Yeah, how do you like that? Well, oh my god, can you believe? Well, yeah, nothing. Of course, my audience is like, you know. That's the other thing too. I told her. I said at point blank. Like, yeah, make gay people watch my show. She was like, gay people watch your show. I don't like it. My audience is mostly gay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> honey, if I hate gay people, I'm out of an audience at this point, isn't it? So it doesn't matter you what. Do. It, it wouldn't matter if I was. I would have to. We're gonna play pretend. Audience capture, baby. You do have a knack for the song, for the gay songs. I do. You know what though? Not hurtful ones. No, no, not that's that's the knack. That's the that's the critical part. They can't be hurtful. Cause why be hurtful? I'm gonna have a little fun with it. So you're saying you have pandering down to an art form? I have. I am such a good heterosexual pander to the gays. Like not to brag. Not too many straight people can pander without pretending to just be gay. Not too many can do it. Tobias Fume K can. That's about it. Oh, shit. By the way, we're the Sons of Tree Air. I'm Dan. I'm talking to Juniper and Michael Jordan Peterson. Uh, All right. Howdy. Obligatory openings. We've done them. 
Opening completed. Opening completed. Achievement unlocked. Boom, 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 boom. Gun sounds. <clears throat> yeah, we did it. Mission accomplished. We're good at streaming. You're you're bad at streaming. <laughs> that's that's a real deep Bob's Burgers joke. Sorry. <sighs> beef squatch. Beef squatch. Yeah, excellent. Excellent to bring up the beef squatch. Have you seen that trans episode of Bob's Burgers lately? No. How was? How is it good or bad? It's both. Really. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, explain this one to me. Um, so they have they have an episode where Bob runs into trans prostitutes doing an Uber job, um, and he ends up inviting them to the birthday party of his daughter. Yeah. Um, the joke is more that he's like bringing his, like his work life balance is all fucked up or whatever. Yeah. But at certain points, he confuses tra- they confuse transvestites with uh, trans with uh, with actual trans people, yeah. and and they make a couple other mistakes. But the fact that they had this episode back in like whatever 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 this is like 2010 or some shit, yeah, is 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 something. It's it's not nothing, and they did create one uh, one of the more beloved characters out of the out of that crew uh, had a recurring role and was just a normal character. Not like, not like. Oh, that's a trans. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so sure. it's it's a little bit of a mixed bag because they made some gaff, but they also at the same time did attempt to do some representation. So did they do? Did they did they make gaffs or did they do it in 2010 lingo when it was like a lot more acceptable to use the T slur? A little bit of both. Okay. A little bit of A, a little bit of B. Yeah. All right. Oh, you know what? I do remember that one. It mm-hmm. wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. It wasn't not bad. No, it was. It was. It was pretty pretty tame. <laughs> as far as a bunch of like, if for like, if you were a casual normie like trying to understand that issue, like that episode, I think would be a boon, not a weakness. I think the uh, the um, uh, what is it? The cardboard quality of it, the uh, just kind of blandness of Bob's Burgers, kind of like makes it so it's not really as big a deal. Yeah. You know, like if South Park just tried tried to do something like that, it it would have been a mess. <laughs> it would have been an accidental mess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But because it's Bob's Burger and everything, so eh, eh, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't hate on Bob's Burgers. I think those guys are funny. Um, <coughs> I don't know. It's watchable. It's very uh, it's it's very Jewish. I'll put it to you like that. It's extremely Jewish humor. Okay, that would that explain a little, little bit better. Yeah, it's 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 because like H I, like uh, H John Benjamin and Sam Cedar are two prominent voices on that show. Those guys have worked and together. Cedar. Yeah, Sam Cedar is Hugo, and he does. Uh, you know the the bitchy neighbor lady, the 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 paint supply seller, like yeah. the art supply seller, and they have the husband. He's the husband too. Did not know that. Yeah, listen to Hugo's voice. It's it's Sam Cedar. They work together on. Do you remember Home Movies? Yeah, I remember. I that. remember that. Yeah, Home ex- Movies was the best. Home Movies was good. Well, it's in the same vein because it's done by the same guy. Oh. It's another Loon Bouchard production. So like that's why they. Well, like- I know, I know that, I know that, and I know H. John Benjamin was there, and it's, and I, I know kind of the history. Yeah. Um, of how that came about, but I did not realize that Sam Cedar was on there. Yeah, Sam. Uh, Sam was on. Um, he was on home movies too, actually. I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he was on home movies. He was. Um, do you remember the character Fenton, the annoying boy? Mm-hmm. That yeah, was Sam. Yeah, I remember Fenton. What? Yeah, that All was Sam. Sam Cedar. Oh yeah. Interesting. Sam the Man Cedar. I I liked how I liked how Sam Cedar like on the one the one episode of the Majority Report I liked how he was just like they were like you fucking somebody was like you fucking communist and he was like like I'm not a communist it was a libertarian he's like well you and your commie friends and he's like listen I want to make something clear I'm not a communist but I'm gonna tell you this right now when those people push for their utopia everything they want to do to get there I am 100% behind he's like I don't yeah, personally buy it 
<laughs> What's that? He's definitely not a communist. He had his uh he had his whole tirade on um on an- his anti communist tirade at that one time and it was just like Ew. Yeah, it was it was kinda cringe. It, I think he was more mad at internet commies, which like to be fair, who's more mad at internet commies than other commies? Other internet yeah, commies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Internet but... <laughs> internet commies suck. Yeah, we do suck. We collectively suck shit. Um but yeah, he was like, listen, I'm not a communist. Okay, I need you to understand that right now. But I'll tell you this. Those people pushing for their version of paradise, everything they do along the way, sign me up. It's great. Don't hate any of it. Good on them if they get it. <laughs> and like, he was like, everything to do, we need to do to get to your version of paradise, talking to a libertarian, he's like, just brings death and destruction in its wake. So no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like you very much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of respect for what you put out there. <clears throat> and I was like, you know what? Based. I like that. I like that answer. Everything those people want to do, sign me up. It's fine. It's all health care and wage increases <laughs> and voting increases. Everything's fine. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want that? <clears throat> But yeah, I'm just telling this libertarian, he's like, Good. everything you want to do, which is ruin the fucking country. <laughs> and the guy's like, and he's like, yeah, how do you think, how do you like that one? <laughs> How'd you like that answer, asshole? Literally, everything about your life is terrible and meaningless and stupid, you know? <laughs> And you know that a lot of that was, like, Michael Brooks's influence, but, like, good on him. Mean, I suspect, though, like, if you were to be, like, if you were to put Sam Cedar in a fucking position where he, quote-unquote, had to pick, like, 99 times out of the 100. Like, when's he picking what the Republican wants? According to him, never. Literally never. You know? So, I, I have a, I'm a bigger fan of him uh, than I am Jenk, to, to, to say the least. Not, not Jenk Engels, our beloved co-host, but no, yeah, Jack Uger. Yeah, as far Uger. as a as far as a, a left ally, if you will. <laughs> Jank and ally. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, Mr. You know, all I'm saying is this. All I'm saying in Mr. Jank Uger's defense is that, uh, or not defense, excuse me. What's that other word? Criticism. Okay, for a guy who talks about how he's the king of progressives, all right, all I'm saying is stock and rush is 4-0 against Jank. All I'm saying. If you're unfamiliar with who Stockton Rush is, you saw him this week in the story of can a billionaire get a boat to the bottom of the ocean in less than two hours? And the answer was yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, let the boat begin. <laughs> <laughs> Let the boats go to the let the subs hit the ocean. <laughs> let the subs hit the floor. Let the subs hit the floor. Let the subs hit the ocean floor. <laughs> well, like what what has Jake Can't done that's comparable? Implode huh? no more. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, here we go, here we go, now. <laughs> My PS2 controller didn't work. Here we go, here we go, here we go, now one. I'm sinking real fast, two, this boat is crashing in, three, I think I'm fucking dead, four. The, PS, the, 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 the controller thing was funny, because a lot of people don't realize that, that game controllers are better than those multi-million dollar knob setups they'd be putting in shits. Except, except for the, except for the model that they used. <laughs> the Logitech, the Logitech, man, you got to be real careful. <laughs> they always jam up on you. You should have sprung for the, you should have sprung for the uh, direct input Xbox controller. <laughs> Could have had it, or at least like a PS, like an actual PS2 controller. <laughs> Bro, if you yeah, can't yeah, PS2, not, PS2 with an adapter, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, if you can't splice those wires, my guy, how are you supposed to be engineering a fucking boat? Did you hear yourself? <clears throat> I wouldn't. I would. I would not. I would not put my life on a Logitech controller. No, it does seem like this. The French would say a fucking stupid idea. 
<laughs> <laughs> Lay idea they that fucking. Is, that is what you say in a stupid idea. But God bless them. They tried. They wanted to die at the bottom of the ocean. God help me. That's four wins for socialism. <clears throat> so what do you you know? That's what I'm saying. Tyt, if you want to be the if you want to be the representation of the left and stock and rush, you want him to be usurped. Can I? You gotta have to up your game. You gotta have to up your fucking game. Can't be out there losing to a dude with a PS2 controller. What the fuck, dude? That's weak shit. You need to get yourself some Switch controllers. You need to fucking level up. Take down a bunch. You like hanging out with rich people anyway. How about a Kinect? Oh, fuck yeah. Xbox Kinect really troll them. They don't know what the fuck's coming <laughs> then. Who knows what's happening when you put that son of a bitch into the boat. <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. <clears throat> dude, some VR fucking drowning. <laughs> Woo! that was the big news this week though wasn't it billionaire drowns from his own stupid fucking decision making oh yeah and i people the people really took off on it and i i i I didn't get it at first but you know it's it's not every day that uh it's just a clusterfuck (laughs) It's not every day that all, like, four billionaires just decide to commit mass suicide, and they're like, oh, well, we need a child sacrifice to get with it. Bring that 19-year-old. You look That's really sympathetic on camera if we all fuck this up and die. Four seconds later, oop, we fucked this up and... Silence. Boop. Boop. <clears throat> I did like how people were like, so the fucking Navy knew they blew up? It's like, no, the Navy knew they heard a weird noise that wasn't normal, and then when they started putting two and two together, they were like, uh-oh. Pretty sure knew. we know what this is. The, the Navy knew. <laughs> I don't. I, there's no way they knew exactly what that was, but at the same time, like they knew the boop, so... Apparently they were trying to hide that they had technology to listen to the entire sea. <laughs> Well, yeah, but then they were like, oh, yeah, by the way, we heard that. Well, I don't know if you know what hiding means. Not sure if y'all know what hiding shit means, but it means not telling people that you knew something that you knew. Yeah. Well, they would have to move their pieces around the game board a little bit to, like, before they said anything, right? Yeah, that's why they had to make sure they were dead. Don't want to reveal any sensitive information. Yeah, that would be bad. Plus, like, too, it's like everybody knows the Navy has the capacity to monitor enemy subs. That's another thing. The U.S. military tries to hide shit everybody already knows anyway. <clears throat> they do this weird game of, not uh to your uh-huh. Right. <laughs> uh-uh, we didn't do that. Uh, no. You can neither confirm nor deny. You can neither confirm nor deny that thing you know I have is real. You just said it's the thing we know you have. Uh, no, I didn't. Like, wait, quit, how clever, like, why do you think you're cleverer than you are? That's the real question. You're using mass surveillance on the internet. Why wouldn't you be doing it in the ocean? In yeah. the air? <laughs> on the land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, is the Navy too good to mass surveil Americans? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> fuck out of here <laughs> yeah, the fuck that you think is going no on no way here? you think we don't no know way, no how <laughs> oh no the no honorable way. navy <laughs> <laughs> our reputation whatever shall we do yeah people oh. don't believe suddenly don't believe we're super altruistic oh I did also have a fun moment tonight so of course one of my uh, uh trans comrades posted the creepiest uh like anti-abortion video they possibly could you know that video they always show of, like the fetus and they're like look at these fetuses aren't they magical and you're like it is the same video from 2002 could you settle the fuck down and stop asking acting like you've done anything original you know what i mean mm-hmm. um they moved that to an ultra 4k like ultrasound okay and then 
in it, you can tell it's also fake because then the, the uterus just starts shooting these things at the baby's mouth and the baby starts sucking on them at 16 seconds in. Ew. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I was like, of course, you know me. I'm like, what in the fuck is that? You, you know, you know, Dan ain't playing. Well, weird. the uterus shouldn't be shooting anything. In, I mean, there's like an amniotic sac and shit. <clears throat> like, it's, you can't just be puncturing that. You, the, the, I'm, um, I'm like, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I got to mansplain this for a moment. Okay. Now I understand oh, I don't hi. have one. But I am goddamn certain there are two things that aren't real, right? Three things that aren't real. Number one. Number one being gestational glizzies. I don't think that the, the uterus makes hot dogs for the baby to munch on. Gestational glizzies. Yeah. <laughs> or if you prefer second trimester sausages. Okay, I don't see that as like being a thing that it does. That doesn't sound right to me. Again, maybe I'm wrong. I want to completely shit on it if it's real, but I'm pretty sure I can mansplain this one, right? <laughs> pretty sure i can't number two it is it is to my knowledge right that there's no such thing as a womb dick or a womb utter so what was that baby sucking on and i was like these fucking these fucking christian pedophiles added a fucking again oh there it goes there goes the stream excellent anywho oh, yeah, there it is <clears throat> oh dan's killing it tonight congratulations congratulations yeah you guys game. think you're good at killing the stream but i am the goddamn og master at ruining this stream return of the mac <laughs> that's right <laughs> it's dan cohen motherfucker maybe you heard of me <laughs> you heard you heard so um of course of course like i was just like be harsh and wait for the bait to set in you know what i mean because one of them will run to the defense of this awful pedophile video sure is fucking shit some woman's like you don't know what an ultrasound is I was like, bitch, you you think I you think I don't know what a uterus is? <laughs> like, do you think that men are that stupid that like, oh yeah, of course the baby sucks a little dick in utero? Like, do you some, what do you some, think? Some, some are, to be fair. <laughs> okay, yeah. So they get they get pretty dumb. Uh, all right, I I will give you that, but counterpoint, I clearly ain't them, so you're gonna have to try again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're gonna have to level up on this line of attack, is uh, I'll tell you what, pal. I've been, I've been, I've been floored at some of the medical misinformation I've heard over the years. <laughs> I'm just saying, womb dick ain't none, ain't no fucking bullshit I never heard of. Just, I, I, they would go, you would say, they would, you would go, you would say, womb, womb dick, and they'd be like, yep. You know, hey, just, that sounds right. <laughs> just, just looking at him like, uh, what? Like, they didn't run with, well, he's sucking his own dick. You know what I mean? Like, that would be like, okay, all right, that's creepy that you're like, you included that in the video, in your little fake made-up video. You went out of your way to include that. But at least that would logically explain it. They're like, you don't know what a blank... I was like, oh, you have just opened a can of worms. I was like, well, unless you're about... I said, I dare you. I dare you right now to tell me about these uh, gestational glizzies that the uterus be making. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead tell me all about that, you fucking pedo liar. Go ahead. Start dropping that knowledge on my ass. Try to try this one. Go see where this goes for you. And then they're like, uh, uh, "Oh shit! Oh, uh, oh, brain fail! Uh, I got to turn into a lib right now." And they're like, "You? Oh, you? Oh, you? You think talking? Uh, you think talking like that is real tough?" And I was just like, "I'm not the satanic pedophile." <laughs> I was like, "I'm not the one who needs Jesus here, buddy. I'm on Jesus' side. Jesus don't think this is happening." I was like, oh, okay. yeah, you felt invited to a party you weren't invited to. I'm going to run you out of town. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. wait. Hey, what okay. Oh, there he is. Okay, okay, wait. Okay, hear me out. No. Okay, hear me out. Uh-uh. No, no, I know exactly. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, hang on. Do not okay, give this... a rousing defense of this creeper. Do not do it. No, we could we could run with this, okay? This, I... this could, <laughs> could be good. Okay, do you remember a classic Alex Jones segment? And I know that everybody in this in this chat right now does remember the segment, but I'm I'm gonna for the purposes of structure, I'm gonna describe the segment. Remember a classic segment on the Alex Jones program where he read an article purportedly written by one Nicole Mullen, sort of a suspicious. Yes. <laughs> 
from her perspective as a uh, liberal woman about how fun and pleasurable uh, abortions are yeah. to get. Oh, which, oh I agree with that. Which I is entirely true. That. I I feel like that that was a net gain, okay? So so with this, okay, with this, okay, we would we would run with this. We would post this video everywhere and we would post like comments and stuff that say things like like did you know that a human baby actually digests a zygotal tail just like a frog does? Human babies are like frogs. That's disgusting. Don't have babies. In fact, we should wipe out babies. It's disgusting. Oh, do you know what birds are doing? Do, do you know that they poop in there? That motherfucker poops inside you. That's not right. That's fucked up. It's ungodly. It's not that's not sanitary. Babies have gotta go. And just like <laughs> just unironically just attack the concept of reproduction based on how unpleasant it is. Right? Like we probably would have a lot of angry responses from people who were 100% serious, read the whole thing without detecting a trace of irony or humor, and responded to it as if we were being completely serious. There would be a boatload of responses like that, just like with Alex um, breezing through the Nicole Mullen article without finding out who Nick Mullen was. Like, <laughs> I think it would just... It would be just fine, I think. I, I, we should run with this one. I, I do know. I now want to make a character who's like, I wasn't gonna have an abortion until I found out that little fucker was shitting inside me. Right, right. <laughs> See, there you go. See, it's, it's already working. It's already Son grinding. Around. It's already working. Did you know that babies absorb your own food and 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 strength from your body? The baby they're fucking parasites. Live. Yes, they're, par they're socialist parasites. I, the baby doesn't live on his own. He doesn't make anything in there. I never seen a baby pay bills. Right. <laughs> he's, he's not paying any bills in there. He's just he's just sucking off your your life juices. Little fucking parasite. That's why all babies are socialists and have to be eliminated. The only way cultural, to have a proper cultural Marxist babies. <laughs> yeah, they all are. They, they, it's not their fault. They don't have a choice. But in order to create a perfect society of you know independent individualists, you would have to stop having babies. You can't have that going on because then you're going to be like, everybody has to work for what they got and everybody has to earn everything. And the meritocracy is real. And when you say that, some smart ass is going to be like, nah. Hang on, what about this baby? And they gotcha. They gotcha. So the only way that you could not lose ideologically there is to eliminate babies. They gotta go. Hold on. Hold on. Somebody else bit. We got a bite number two. We got a bite number two. All right. This is just breaking. So when you saw someone hammering a satanic pedophile, you were like, I have to white knight this pedophile. Newsflash number one, you're... You're going to hell, Pedo. <laughs> Newsflash two. You're too old for her. <laughs> awesome. Oh, got their asses. <clears throat> I love it where the bait keeps paying off. Yeah. So when you saw somebody attacking a pedophile, you're like, I need to intervene. I think the, the least freshened and most uh, hits that I've ever seen on the oldest piece of bait that exists on that website right now, to my knowledge is, um, the, the bio of one, uh, Twitter user, skirt Vonnegut, uh, shout out <laughs> skirt Vonnegut, uh, where it says, um, PhD in race science at Harvard. Yeah. Uh, when he put that in that bio and this was years ago, you know, he chuckled at it, you know, cause we've been doing a lot of race science jokes, but, we really never could have imagined, I know he couldn't, and I certainly couldn't, ever have imagined how many conversations that he would have to have on Twitter.com with people who think that, that there's a race science department at Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they're massively racist themselves, so they believe that race science is like an important field of study in which advances are being made every day, right? 
Uh, <laughs> well, instead, they just, instead, they just bake it into all the curriculum. They don't need to have a special department. I, right. I like, all the wanna... inferior races, they need to be fixed somehow. So, presumably, that's what the race science department at Harvard does, is try to figure out a solution to all the inferior races, right? Like, it's important work. Yeah, so I just want to point out the fact that they haven't had a Department of Race Science in at least 70 years. Yeah, it's, it's at least that long. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that that's maybe the place where I can let these guys off the hook that, that take this bait, despite how old and, and unfreshened it is, uh, is that at one point there certainly was a Department of Race Science, not just at Harvard, but at every respected school in the country. At one point there certainly was a phrenology professor. But yeah, I think you're right. Probably about seven, seven decades, six decades for some southern schools, maybe when five decades. When did Harvard get rid of its phrenology department? <laughs> it's going to be bad. It's going to be like <laughs> gonna, that shit's going to say 1984. Roll it for, roll it for 94. Yeah, roll it for 91. <laughs> I'm, I'm going for 91. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of phrenologists who've. who've uh, ooh, where did? Oh, hold on. Uh, who did the bell curve? Yeah, oh, Charles shit. Murray. Oh. Uh, yeah, political scientist. Yeah, interesting. Charles Murray, born 1943. So we have active phrenologists out there. All those dudes who are like, there's a fundamental difference between whites and blacks are just phrenologists, right? That's the racism yeah. and phrenology are pretty. Pretty well together, yeah, uh, weaved. Like the 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 measuring skulls thing is really just our joke at this point. Like they didn't actually do the calipers thing for very long, but then for many years after that, they it's fair to well, say that they continued I mean, to practice for how long they admitted it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they might have kept that stuff in the house, like you know. You know, Clarence Thomas's friend's house or whatever. They still have all that stuff. Oh, Har Harlan Crow. <laughs> yeah. Harlan Crow's house. That guy's Most guard. Definitely. Calipers. Um, neurobiology didn't start at Harvard Medical School until 1966. So I'm guessing it lasted a pretty good fucking while. There, yeah. You know what's weird, though? You can't, uh, you can't really find it. You can't really... They're trying to hide it from the old Google response. Yeah. Um, get rid of its phrenology degree. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, we might have to go to Wikipedia for this one because, of course, like... Oh, yeah. They're they're going to hide that. Also, the Democrats have an active phrenologist, too. That Rahm Emanuel, his brother is... is an interesting Malthusian ph uh, phrenologist, which is the, one of the most horrific combinations of people you can be, and if he was given political power, would be just objectively worse than Hitler, right? Yeah, yeah, because they got so much more juice nowadays. Yeah. Like, you know, the Germans, they got, you know, what they got done, they, they did that with a bunch of antique bullshit. I mean, when you imagine how it could go today, you know, with modern streamlined processes and shit. Yeah, and and the fact that this is somebody who who is heavily invested in neoliberal uh, neoliberalism and its uh, NGO fucking attitudes, right? The 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 desire to offload this everywhere. Um, like, I guess though, for profit, by the way. I guess you would have to make a distinction, like when you accused them of like trying to do a Holocaust, because you would have to be like, you guys are trying to. You'd have to say they were trying to quicken the because they're already doing a slow genocide of all living things on the planet so you'd have to be specific or else they would get confused if you were like you guys are doing a, a new holocaust they'd be like well you know yes you'd have to say no we mean like a separate one like a new one <laughs> like because they, they'd think you were just talking about their project of you know eventually eradicating every living thing on the planet which as i understand is going very well Seems to be just cruising right along. Right on track. Yeah. So I'm still looking this up. I'm sorry. Also, I have to dunk on that uh, pedophile again because they have 68 followers. So they got their they got their sick burn. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Did you say 68? <laughs> yeah, 68. Once if like if I find out you have less than a thousand followers, 
and you like try to have a debate with me, like I just insult you once and then mute you. So like you need to make a lot more burner accounts. Oh, here's the all the good things about phrenology. <laughs> Shit, you <laughs> not. Say what? <laughs> yeah. Whose damn article is all the good things about phrenology? Uh, Wikipedia. The application oh. of phrenology. Does it use the term physiognomy? <laughs> without I irony. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Uh, criminology was the first to use phrenology positively. Oh. Uh, define positively. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that adverb. That adverb is doing a lot of heavy lifting for an adverb. <laughs> it is. Basically, they were so, ra- you know, people were so, w- whites. Okay, let's be fair. They meant whites. Whites were so inferior in some instances that vindictive punishments would not stop them, but you had to reorganize a disor- their disorganized brain to rehabilitate them. That's a fun fact. When did it, when did it end? Because I noticed what? that they don't really say that it ended. propensities Wait, and reorganizing their disorganized brain? Uh-huh. Criminals have schizophrenia is where that leads. That's like psychiatry picks that one up and then drops it pretty quickly, but So I mean, like when they're talking about how does that fit into phrenology unless they were they like hammering the lumps back in? I mean, yeah, where yeah. The idea was that their brain was shaped stupid, so they were doing crime. Oh, okay. It's oh, okay. Phrenology, phrenology was mostly discredited by the 1840s. I don't believe you. See, they keep referring to the 1800s, but I know for a fucking fact, as late as 19, the 1940s, the British uh, Phrenological Society. There we go. Now we're getting honest. Now we're getting honest with it. Original name Shadal Hira. Shadal Shadal Era. Organology. Uh, doctrine of the skull and the, the study of organs. Neat. Craniology, cranioscopy, phrenology. Okay, here we go. Eighteen forties. No, 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 no. Theories, practices, and sites. No, I want to know when it fell out of favor. Oh yeah. Also, facial recognition technology. Duh. What am I thinking? Of course, we use phrenology today. We use facial recognition. The Chinese are trying to engineer. Like the Chinese, for example, are trying to engineer a way to spot gay people based on their chin and their nose. Digital phrenology. Yeah. And I know we're we're using it to try to point figure out which black people did the crime we want to accuse them of. Which, you know, if you follow that sentence through on its logic meaning, so like we don't actually know, but we know which one we want to pick. Cause like it's based to target people on their race if it's digital, but it's not based to do it if it's like just a guy being like, Yeah, I think it was him. Harass him. <laughs> You know, just remember that Tech, uh, the, the, the techno futurists are just literally the landlords of old and the racists of old all fused into like, but now it's science. <laughs> well, if you feed the computer racism. Yeah. Surprisingly. The computer yeah. is infallible and can never make a mistake. <laughs> but for all the racism you pumped into it. Except for all the mistakes that it makes. <laughs> Except for all those, kind of cringe. Did you plug? Did you unplug it and plug it back in? Yeah. <laughs> I keep watching videos about Chat GPT and like people being like, "Wow, it's fucking amazing." But then like I watched the one video was like, "Hey, you ever wonder why like AI can beat like master players?" But then like if you just switch to a strategy for a basic bitch, like the computer is just like, "Is this still a game?" That's because it doesn't know it's playing a game. It's just recognizing patterns. Yeah. 
It's just responding. And as it turns out of the professional play, all you do is repeat patterns. Isn't that weird? It's just pattern hmm. repetition. Isn't that funny? Super, super, duper weird. So weird, guys. So weird. Are you still working on your dive into phrenology there? Oh, I definitely am. Yeah, I just got done conquering the world as a Chinese in Age of Empires 2, which is totally fucking based. And then, uh... <laughs> And now I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, I multitask. You guys didn't even know I was doing that. That's the fucking that's the that's the Dan Juke. Let the ADHD rule. Uh, I can't find it, but I'm gonna say it hasn't ended. It just took a new form, and it just they laundered it through uh, digital technology because they had wealth and they had the opportunity to do so. Um, it seemed about right. Yeah. Unfortunately, it does seem about right, doesn't it? But that kind of that kind of that makes it like you know one molecule less funny that that those guys always believe that maybe the joke's on us. Yeah. <laughs> maybe the real phrenology was the friends we made along the way. Maybe, or maybe it's these motherfuckers who just keep doing phrenology for like zero fucking good reason. Maybe it's the phrenology. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's the phrenology in this case. I don't know. I'm suspicious. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. It. It might be. Hmm. It might be the motherfucking phrenology. How late are we so in? Can... We got 42 minutes in. All right. So I feel like now it's only for the real ass people anyway. What did you guys think of that? Uh, what did you think of that pitch? Oh, I enjoyed it. I don't know. I, I saw this. Yeah. You mentioned this on a Hulu, but I never got a chance to watch it. Well, you need to make time to watch it, my friend. We can do a watch party for that motherfucker because it is great. You said it's modern Sorry. family. No, is it? No, more not of modern a family. Arrested Development. More oh, of a precursor okay. to the, a funnier, like more, like well-made precursor to some of the like the 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 shows that are that are all kind of similar to Modern Family. Yeah. That there was like a whole glut of like later on. The. The the premise to it is imagine if the Bush family was fictional and then shenanigans happened. The, right. The the show kind of the show kind of falls uh, frankly the show does just openly fall apart when they try to then um when they try to transform them into being the Trump family. Yes. It it just completely shits the bed. But like until like the first three seasons where they're clearly like the Bushes being ridiculous idiots. Like, oh my God, it's great! And like, like, uh, as I think it was Juniper who said this, but like, one of the big premises is just like, imagine you just keep fucking up repeatedly, <laughs> and then there's a competition to see who fucks up the most in any given moment. Shooting yourself in the foot. Shooting yourself over and over and over. <laughs> yeah, and the loser is always the one who shoots themselves like the hardest or with the biggest gun. And I think it it's a good example. Like, I mean, I'm not. Uh... Okay, like, if you're doing good enough to be a television writer, you definitely ain't poor. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I think the guys that wrote this thing, I think they, they do a good job of um, really visualizing what it would sound like if these people, like, you know, talk to each other, like, you know, in a family situation. Like, the way that, that everything that is just, like ludicrously horrible like skull and bones initiation rituals and stuff like it's always the characters like saying that shit to each other like oh you remember um we met at the coffin jerk off you know or whatever like it's just like 
it is yeah. very Bush family in that sense or whatever. Like, oh, don't you remember Cousin Joe um, drove us down to watch um, the shooting that Daddy planned in Dallas? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it's always just like the most standout horrific events of like millions of people's lives. But to them, these are uh, the history of like social functions they did that were very successful. Yeah. <laughs> right? Another Tuesday. Yeah, just another Tuesday. Yeah, the Tuesday when we took Lyndon uh, down to Dallas uh, to see what would happen if he didn't play his cards right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all. That was Poppy's best shooting, you guys. They still haven't figured out. They still haven't figured out where the bullet came from. <laughs> Did you guys know? Did you guys know if they don't solve that killing within 100 years, Poppy and one of the other old guys from Yale, they have a bet where we'll win uh, Geronimo's skull. If in 2063 they haven't solved that shooting, we win it, you guys. We get Geronimo's skull. I mean, it's covered in cum, so, you know, it's not going to be, you're not going to want to display it in your dining room or anything, but you'll have it, you know. You'll definitely have it. You'll have it. You'll have the the skull of a legendary uh, Native American figure that is encased irreversibly in a hardened cube of of decades of of Yale cum. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, it's a good show. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. yeah, it's a great show. It's been. I wonder if you could have done that. I wonder if you could have done the coming in the skull and bones coffin joke when they made that show. It's on network, wasn't it? It was on network. It was on yeah. Fox. When I, I don't guess Fox. you could have done that. A certain amount of leeway on Fox, though. And you know that right there is a strong <laughs> argument. The fact that they couldn't have done that then—that's a strong argument for doing a reboot, isn't it? It's a strong argument in favor of the pitch, isn't it? There's a lot of shit they couldn't have done. I say, I don't think I they already it rebooted it once. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even see those. Are those good? Um, I didn't watch them. I sounds like it sounds like the kind of show that like it's, it's hard to recapture the magic. Oh yeah. You you yeah. did because it, it sounds very execution heavy. It is excruciatingly execution heavy, and it is unfortunate. Like the most unfortunate part about it, I think. Is that if you were not familiar with like 2003, right? It um, yeah, it's extremely confusing. That's what a lot of it is. Is Ron Howard is just really pissed off about, about the bushes, and you can't. You gotta you gotta know how flagrant Republicans were on their victory lap around 2003. Yeah, you gotta know how every single day. They were out there taking the same victory lap over 2000 that they had been taking for three years. And instead of running out of steam and getting bored of it, taking it harder every day. Like every time you have to hear about the fact that George Bush is president, they came up with a new way to make you be pissed off about it. Right. Yeah. They like respect in that regard. That's an impressive feat, but they pulled it off. It is because it is. It's even a complete terrible. It wouldn't even be strategically correct to do that. Strategically, they should let everybody chill out and forget about it, and then maybe they don't get slaughtered as bad by Obama. But no, no, <laughs> no. They went about you know creating the same perfect hubris, you know, conditions for themselves, setting up the same streak of dominoes that that well, quite frankly, you see Barack Obama set up. Eight years later, um, when he's at the White House Correspondents' Dinner and he says, the one thing Donald Trump will never be is the president. <laughs> it's almost like these guys I, like I to create. <laughs> <laughs> but like, for real, though. Like, it's just, it's just fucking amazing how, like, the level of stupid that this fucking shit, well, they, they just do. They just, they, they just did it, and they're just like, yeah, yeah, it's, it works. And they're like they're like okay like wrestlers like understand that part of their paycheck would come from holding up kayfabe right yeah but there's there's no reason to go that hard 
right? No. Like, the way that the two big teams provoke the base of the other team is, like, never pays off in an election. I They all just want to abdicate power. They all, all of their goal is to be in for as least amount of time as possible, get out early, get out hard, cable news, books, speaking tours, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like once you're there, it, from the first day that you have to do a job, it sucks shit for you, right? Yeah. You're like, oh God, why did I do this? Like. I haven't even come up with any cool ways to abuse my power yet. Like, imagine having to be Bill Clinton before he was sending the the Highway Patrol uh, to kidnap child slaves nightly. Yeah. Like, he must have been so bored. Like, you know, if you can't step up your child slave game right away, I think you probably even want to abdicate worse. You're probably even readier for the speaking tour, you know? Because oh, yeah. all... all all the guys that seem like they liked it, all the guys that seem like that they weren't in any hurry to leave are your biggest child slave guys, right? Really? Yeah. Like, I'm not just saying that. Like, I, yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a great, it's a great country. <laughs> <laughs> It's just really great. I tend to think that political positions should be filled like like jury duty. Hey, hey. Like you, you get a notice in the mail and it's like you've been selected and you're like, oh fuck. Right. Which yes, I gotta go action. serve my community now. Well they, yes. they know that, that would cause potentially some fairness because then poor people would get in. Right. Yeah. Yes. They can't have that. You can't do, have yeah. that. You do have to have the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. In a, in a world though where we could actually try even one thing ever, it is it is an interesting sounding option to where it's like, yeah, all right. Not only might that work well, even if it didn't work well, it couldn't possibly be any worse than what this is now. <laughs> There's no chance of that. So, <laughs> last right, and it it takes care of what I've always seen as the biggest problem, which is that the people that want it the most are the people that are least suitable for that kind of p power and position. They're not good. Well, well. <laughs> they like anyone that legitimately there. wants to be president shouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Hard agree. <laughs> Hard agree. They only want it for one reason. They, they, to be fair, like you, you want comptroller for one reason too. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. you know, I don't want to. I want to be too hard on just the the four people who get to have a chance to be president every sixteen years. Right. Oh, yeah, but, I, but that's why I'm saying like electoral positions in general. It ought to. It ought to be thrust upon you. Yeah. unwillingly kicking and screaming people should be coming up with reasons to get out of it the only reason that might be a problem is like who who's controlling that ballot like comrade stalin here guides us the best with like who's making that decision who's in that lottery and pulling out the winner you know what i'm saying <laughs> like a lot of that dude's like hardest <laughs> pop off a <laughs> lot should. of that dude's pop offs like that, that seem you know, a historical now, like a lot of that type of stuff. Like, you're like, wow, how could somebody be that suspicious? It's entirely because the 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 most effect the most affecting thing that happened to them fuckers was uh completely fixed elections, right? Like, it it's not hard to imagine the next generation of Americans after if Americans ever woke up to that, you know, their elections were rigged or whatever. Like, yeah. it's hard to imagine how mad they could be, on what level they could be mad, because Stalin was fucking mad. <laughs> he was I love, mad. I love it. They're always, they're, they're always, the Soviet Union is a dictatorship, authoritarian dictatorship. <laughs> And then and then they they go and, and vote in their rigged election. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not. You're not. You're not gonna. There's no surprise outsider thing. It's not gonna happen. Guys, it, guys, guys. What are we doing here? 
you know, they were so they they jacked their their fucking polls so fucking hard to the concept that Trump was one for four years just to try to obfuscate the truth that that will never happen under any circumstances. Right. Like Trump was not assassinated, so he obviously did something right. Okay, (laughs) like. (laughs) Whatever it is, lack that, of trying. <laughs> yeah, Whoa. not for lack of trying for sure. It was but, trying to get rid of that motherfucker. <laughs> whatever it is that the president of this bullshit has to do in order to not be murdered, he did whatever those things are, as did Obama before him, and um, <laughs> fucking Bush before him, and you know all the way back, to, except for the one guy that you know that you remember. Um, yeah. Poppy drove he us down there. to Dallas to see his brains get sprayed all over his wife. You remember that guy? You remember that guy? And then on on the show, the next line is somebody saying how nice um, Miss Kennedy's dress was. Immediately, shame but about she the really brain. Was wearing a nice dress. It it was. About and the that brain. little hat, adorable. It I told her not to wear. I told her not to wear anything nice that day. And your poppy was so mad when he found out that I told her that. But I said, she doesn't know why. She doesn't know it's because she's going to get sprayed with the brains of that communist traitor, her husband. She doesn't know that. (laughs) I just told her not to wear anything nice that day. Didn't take my advice. Look where it got her. Look where that got her. (laughs) Just like her husband. (laughs) Yeah. Showed her ass. Yeah, I'm d- I'm down for the pitch. All right, because it uh, it's it's they they sound like the bushes still, but it's the bushes as if you could talk about everything the bushes did openly on television. Yes, yeah, that's a good right? way of putting like, it. Like you can just be open about the shit. You don't have to play pretend or be stupid or be like, oh no. Right. No. Like I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not trailblazing new ground at risk anything here like a, a zillion podcast now is totally fine for them to be like oh yeah they killed that motherfucker probably george senior to kill that motherfucker like it's okay to say that there's probably a lot of other stuff about the bushes that we haven't thought of that and it's maybe, super maybe a couple months will and maybe in a couple of years we'll actually get that evidence <laughs> right or declassify and we'll be like oh we knew it <laughs> i feel like i feel like the bandar bush stand in on that show was extremely weak. I feel like that we could do a much better version of the um, Saudi prince member of the Bush family character. Yeah. Now that it's okay to talk about the fact that he just does the sick blade combo from Elden Ring on guys that he doesn't like, you know, with two scimitars and shit, doing the fucking <laughs> Mary Posa cart- doing the fucking Mary Posa cartwheel. And like unnecessarily lacerating a dude four times diagonally vertically across his chest with the sick blade combo <laughs> for journalism. But he that's not necessary. Journalism. That that's not necessary. That's how they roll over there, and it's like okay to talk about that now. So you could have like <laughs> you could have they, they're working on Neom now. That's I'm sure the Bushes are involved in Neom somehow. How could they not be? It would be amazing. How many of them were? How many of them are still alive? Just the boys? I mean, are like, the boys, the boys and the kids, yeah. Is 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 the brothers really on their own? Do they really walk this earth without the guidance of George or Barbara? That seems strange. Uh, it is, but you know that's what we're that's where we're at now. Just Jeb and GW just walking around, just yep. thinking Jeb and GW thoughts. With no, with no dark hidden hand of the market to guide them. None. God damn. I know. It's a cheer. It's a. I'm. I'm cheery this week. I'm just going around spreading. <laughs> <cheer>. <laughs> You're the ghost of that's, Christmas fucking past. <laughs> that's not. That's not dark at all. Say. Uh, that's not dark at all. It's cheery. It's teary. It's teary. Probably just, probably just tired. But, you know, I don't have to tell you guys this because you guys already know this. But they're making a lot of money at, at the factories down here. Yeah. 
Yeah, they do. That that tends to be the case. That's that's the, the after whole, effect that's of the whole COVID. thing. <laughs> the after effect of COVID in the end is that they picked and chose what shit they wanted to change with the laws. Well, mostly dealing with that. Mostly dealing with how they treat the physical, organic body of the employee, right? The COVID carrier, the risk, right? Yeah. And then they are made much money. And as a result, I'm very tired. Well, listen, we're all tired now. I want you to know that. Yes. We're never going to get tired. That's probably why I'm so full of cheer, right? Well, listen. I'm so full of piss and vinegar. Before he was just full of vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, we had guys kicking it on the, um, the the space on Wednesday that I think were new to like you know snatching a microphone, and I was just just doing a horrible job of uh, engendering that and you know encouraging that to be a thing people do more. <laughs> it was, I was doing very poorly at that. <laughs> we had some rookie cats, like, snatching up mics, like, at that thing. And, you know, I was, instead of enjoying that and celebrating it, you know, in a welcoming, pleasant way, I was out there, you know, talking that bullshit. <laughs> you know? Talking that bullshit. I was out there saying that, you know, we were in a very, very bad position. I don't know, though. It's accurate, right? Yeah. You gotta really take stock, right? It's very accurate. You gotta really take stock. You can't just be like, I'm gonna highlight some type of uh, victory or whatever. I don't know, though. I always, I always worry that I do it too much. I always worry that I sell it too good. Right? Because if you describe what it really is, you are, as we've said many times on the show, at the top of the Wednesday space. If you describe what it really is, it's like, okay, if you think this way, it's going to help you in your day-to-day life with a lot of small things. You're probably going to deal with all that stuff much better. But um, we never win. Uh, it's it's really hard. People get mad at you all the time. Sometimes they throw you out of a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> if you describe what it is, it's not inviting, right? No. And it's, it's you, you know, Dan, as you mentioned many times on the show, I mean, nobody nobody knows that it's not inviting better than our old buddy Heidegger, right? Like, can't be you can't be worried about that shit, son. Like, you gotta you gotta chill out and enjoy your time at your little small holding with your little family that you got. That'd right? be that'd be Nietzsche. Heidegger is more worried about are you even a person, or then do you have a self? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. I, I guess yeah. I guess the the, the argument for the simple life is rooted in the Nietzsche shit because, in a way, he, by defining an Uber, per, he, he's also telling you that you know if you're sitting there reading this and not outside doing Uberman shit, then probably you're regular. So probably <laughs> <laughs> that's you're just a, you're just a person, and it's just yeah. to Nietzsche that's a bit of a crime in and of itself. You should try to be the Ubermensch. Um. Yeah, that's that's good old. Ne- oh, we're going. Oh, we're going back to Nietzsche, are we, baby? Okay. But we always do. We live in America. We're that's Americans true. that live in America, and we always have to Operation Paperclip our fucking ass back to Nietzsche after World War Two, don't we? <laughs> we fucking live in old America. We do live in shitty old America. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's it's you know it's really hard to to live that existence where you you have a great love for the people and the the land but if someone were to ask you how you feel about the state you know like the the national identity you know you have to tell them you have to tell them that the only question in your mind is whether it's more accurate to call it the fourth reich or a continuation of the third reich (laughs) like that's the only thing you wonder about about how to describe America anymore on a day to day is like, well, those are some of the same guys that come over with Operation Paperclip. So technically, you could call it the Third Reich. 
But on the other hand, it's, you know, so new. It's, it's the new world, right? Well, it would be, be the difference between Fourth and Fifth Reich if we're going to be very technical. Because the Fourth Reich was the Nazi Germany. But the Fifth Reich is uh, arguably what we're forced to live under now in all its stellar glory. Um, okay, so you think so, too. You think you have to make a sequel. You think you can't just be like, this is, you know, it, a four hour long movie where it starts out before World War Two and it's still going now. <laughs> they keep having post credit scenes of like fucking <laughs> the, the exact same white controlled capital that did the genocide just changing hands in a shadowy room. So, so the movie is like six hours long. You're it, like, God damn, <laughs> when it, is this over? It depends on what you consider which. Like I know that sounds weird and I'm uh, I'm on the fence. Right, <laughs> such a weird thing to be in right now. Thank you. You've really, uh, you've really decided how we're gonna do this one, huh? Um, I told you, I'm full, I'm full of cheer. You, I see this. I see that you are full of cheer. So, if you consider the Fourth Reich to be representative of of German fascism, then there is no then it is just a tangible continuation. If you find that the difference between what occurred in Germany and what is now occurring worldwide is uh, premised upon, say, <sighs> instead of using it as a systematic tool of oppression for a race group that happens to just catch up all these other, like catch all things that are unionized, uh, and instead it is a way to fight communism and it really doesn't like it's more malleable because it's fighting a political ideology and it doesn't require a Jewish character, although they will just take it back to Judaism. Right. Because, of course, like you never you never forget you, you never forget where you came from. But right. If, if um, necessary, you use invented communism, whatever, you know, if that if that if that gets you hard. Sure. The Jews invented communism. You can have that. Right. Yeah. You, you totally can, have. You, sure, you can have a little bit of that as a treat or whatever, right? But if you consider it, um, if you consider it as a as a means of oppression for any kind of organized left, then we're under the Fifth Reich. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. That's the perfect place to make the distinction. That's the perfect place to make the distinction because the fucking development of the security state is more worth considering in that one, right? Like, that's the one where it's like. You know, it, it's way heavier that they eventually got around to, okay, um, anybody that says they're in any of these groups can be treated as a domestic terrorist, right? Yeah, it's more important that way because the premise um, the premise is more <clears> – <throat> the premise is more so in, in, in that latter distinction – um, how do we make sure that there's no way to actually touch power in a tangible way? Whereas in the the goal of original German fascism is like you need to exterminate your enemies, and the goal is just to produce the most efficient killing machine possible. All right. Um, which I tend to I tend to favor the distinction between the Fourth and Fifth Reich, and that America has taken over the role of the Fifth Reich, whereas. Um, you know, some people would disagree with me readily and not without like, I'm not going to say that they're without, I'm not, I'm not going to say they're without any yeah. merit for making that distinction because perhaps they are right and I'm wrong, but I, that's, we, my we are definitely, we are definitely having fun. I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> yeah, we're doing real well ahead. as a society. Yeah. You know, the, level any charge of being an unserious person at Dan or myself. You know, feel free. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Feel free to. And I'll tell you to go fuck yourself. I don't care. You know, we are frequently out here being unserious up in the wasteland. We are frequently being unserious in that motherfucker. We're also yeah. being very serious sometimes. But, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to respond to any like th th that's the thing. That's where we got started on this is. You, I want really bad to say that to somebody, but there's no point because you know they're immediately going to you know they either they're either already at that point or they ain't. You know, it's yeah. they're gonna see some shit other than you telling them something. They're gonna see some shit other than you telling them something. They're gonna see that shit and they're gonna be like, oh damn. <laughs> 
damn, well, nobody beat the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. They're going to see some shit. Formally speaking, they like, were, the, the Nazis were beaten because they were subordinated, right? They were rendered a subordinate class within American capitalism. They needed to be yes. kept in the back pocket so they can be leaned on yes. whenever necessary. But Right. As a, as a real material political party that existed like in history, they did not have any clout after that. No. No more clout for you. You, gotta, there, you can't do nothing on the front of the, the stage in the spotlight. Their, their clout now has to come it has to be laundered through it now has to be laundered entirely through the idea that um like it is subordinate to american capitalism and that's like if you like if you really wanted to diagnose what we're going through in my opinion at least right what we're seeing the difference is is that they're tired of that they're yeah. tired of being subordinate yeah is the more the goals of the thing openly align with their goals and their values and beliefs and shit, the more they're like, what the hell? Yeah. Why are we being left out in the goddamn cold? Now wait just a fucking minute. What the hell? You guys are out here doing all this Nazi stuff. And you, oh, we show up and you guys are like, you're not. What the fuck, man? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, yeah. I mean, like, OK, this is the weirdest thing I'm ever going to say. But like, if I were living in this country now, I were an ardent Nazi. I would be a little bit upset that the libs keep doing what they're doing. And then I'm not supposed to be able to play at the party. Like, why in the fuck not? Yeah. Which, like, yeah. from their point of view, that is a fair question. They are doing yeah. Nazi shit. Why the fuck am I not invited? Is because I'm I'm too gauche? And like, if you think like, wow, Dan, that's a really fucked up thing to say. Look at Richard Spencer's big pitch. His pitch yes. is we're going to put on the suits and we're going to be respectable. That way the liberals have to take us seriously and treat yes. us as equals. He's getting ripped off. He's living his worst life because mm -hmm. they won't admit what they're doing. And tomorrow reopen the phrenology department at Harvard. And instate him as professor, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what you mind. That's what should happen, justifiably. Like, now that we've figured out that it is a race thing, <laughs> I can tell that by what the way the country runs. When am I going to get to help? You know? <laughs> yeah. When when do I get my shot to be in charge? Because I'm the one who knows what to do best. And like, again, if you live in a country is doing as much Nazi shit as our shitty country is doing, why wouldn't you think that? When's Nazi Pride Month? Well, they but they ask that, don't they? <laughs> they <laughs> but they don't right. get to call it that. <laughs> no, they don't get to call it that, but they go, when's White Pride Month? Which, like, how fucking different is it? You know, it's, it's like I said, like, if I were them, I would be butthurt all of the time. Like, why am I not invited to the party? What's wrong with me? Why can't I... You know, why can't I play? Well, you can't play because you're too fucking open about it. The liberals like to keep it fucking, they like to water it and pretend it's not happening. You know, you were too, you were too eager to show off the fact of how popular you were at the party, which ostensibly speaking, they're always going to pretend to be revolted and outraged. You know, they they have to pretend to be outraged because it looks bad that, oh, yeah, the Nazis like agree with so much with our feelings about capitalism and want us to continue the program we're on precisely because on, you know, like in a very real way, it keeps grinding on the same people that they want to grind on. Oh, we keep doing Nazi shit. Now we like kind of feel guilty and bad. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Like, stop doing Nazi shit, I guess. Like, I don't know why you're so invested in doing Nazi shit. They well, want to have their Nazi cake and eat it, too. Yeah, and then they have the balls to be like, how can you say that about us? Well, I, I don't know. I looked like I looked around <laughs> and said, oh, that's what you're doing. Like, I don't know. what. Like, well, why am I the bad guy for pointing out? Like, you know what I mean? Like Richard Spencer, you accepted him as somebody you're supposed to take seriously in debate. Why is it like, oh, you're on the left, so you can't say it. But here's this actual fucking Nazi and he can say it. And it's like a curious point that we should mull over. No, motherfucker. You should be like, oh, shit. Is that what we've been doing? We should change. <sighs> but that's just Dan being butthurt again, I guess. What do I know? What the fuck do I know? I don't know. It's fucking surreal. Just a little bit of Nazi shit, that's all. We're just doing a bit of Nazi shit. Just a little tiny bit of Nazi shit. 
as a treat. As a treat. We just want to do some as a treat. Fuck. Come on, we want to do the Pride March, but then we want to also gentrify the neighborhood. Can't you just let us do both? Well, no. No, you can't. I'm sorry. That's not how it works, you know. But they keep getting away with it. They keep getting to do it, and we just keep letting them. They can't keep getting away with it, though. Right? Like, it's going to be well, okay, right? Uh, probably not. I mean, you see how bad it rips the country, right? You know, let's, let's just, Dan, just let's, let's just, Dan, spoil that one now. No, I mean, look how fucking, look how fucked up the country gets. It can't take it. The cultural zeitgeist can't handle this happening. To the point, like, you want to know how fucked up it is in America? The libertarians and the communists came together to make fun of the fucking billionaire neoliberal libertarian and his stupid fucking lack of regulations. Yeah. Unilaterally. It's the conservative and the liberals who are like, I can't believe you would talk about them that way. Everybody who's out of power is like, yeah, good, he had a common. Fuck him. Fuck those four. So There was a big... There was a big swarm for that motherfucker, and you saw people trying to like say they shouldn't be doing that or whatever. But it was a very small subsection of people saying that. It, it really. And was. every time you saw one of those people, it was because someone else was mocking them. Yeah. Yes. Meaning that they were actively searching for the mockery and then just jumping in to defend the the fucking billionaire who killed four people. And even even toward the so-called center, you saw a lot of guys have the libertarian or communist that live deep within their heart just lash out on those motherfuckers. Like, I know a dude at work who is ostensibly a mild progressive, but he thought that shit was hilarious. <laughs> like, yeah. he dunked on those motherfuckers a lot at work. And, you know, I mean... <laughs> I, know, I know some motherfuckers who I suspect are fucking conservative jumping on that shit. Yes. yes. They were like, good. The dumbass billionaire did dumbass shit. God and he fucking ass, goddamn ass billionaire. <laughs> yes. I don't, and it, so, so the lib jumps in and they're like, oh, that's that's kind of mean. Maybe I'm going to hell for saying this. And I'm and I come in and I say, nah, fam, you're good. They won. They won the Darwin. They won the Dar. They were Darwin Award recipients. Yeah. yeah. And then and then all oh, of a sudden, is. everybody just started flooding in like, oh, shit, it's time to go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> that's that's how it should be. Is that this, sometimes these rare events happen to where they do have that little spark of insight, you know, wherever they're at on the big line. Everybody came together to shit on the billionaires. <laughs> well, you know, in that regard, again, that man killed three people. That he did. That he did. I mean, I hate to be that guy, I guess, yet again, but here I am being that guy because I don't, <clears throat> you know, if I killed three, if I killed three other people in that manner, you would be like, holy shit, Dan, that is super fucked up. How could you even do that? Let alone if I was just like overconfident on the news, but because he's a billionaire, that's the only little difference. Like if I strung together at the same fucking quality as sub, and dicked around in my backyard with it, you'd be like, Dan, that is a death trap, and you'll get four people killed. That dickhead's a billionaire, and, and, and he's supposed to be like, oh, yeah, no, just jump in his boat. He, clearly, he knows what he's doing. He's a billionaire. No, motherfucker. You didn't You didn't notice a leak 10 feet down and go, oh, this is bad. Turn this, turn this fucking death trap around. No, you were just like, ah, it's fine. And the, the, the odds say it's okay. That was literally one of the defenses of that, that, that fucking boat. Well, mathematically speaking, it should be fine. It was it. It'd be all right. Was it? I know. When, I know. If something in my car starts springing a leak, mathematically, any individual time is good. But the problem is, once it isn't, that's it. We're done. Make some crap. It's funny you're making a on It'll be all right. Thought about something. Jesus. What's ahead? Like, if the money this guy was making off this thing, he simply could have bought it for something. I, I really could have though. Like it ain't even like it ain't even like this was some kind of scrappy startup attempt to like you know do amateur submarining. Like from jump, yeah, it really was this shit amateur. was you know an extremely valuable operation. Yeah, it was just abject dog shit, and he was like, "Ah, oh, fuck it, man, it's cool," because I saved the <laughs> consumer. 
that motherfucker is a billionaire. He needs to pay three, four hundred thousand dollars to go on the boat ride. That way he remembers that he's a fucking billionaire. What do you think the point of having a billion fucking dollars is? You goddamn dummy. Like, that's the other thing. Like, these people are like, no, we got to save the consumer. Who, what fucking consumer do you know that's going to be like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to take my boat ride on the death trap. Who looks around for budget submarine rides? Yeah. (laughs) When you say it out loud, it really reveals how fucking stupid that idea is. I need to I need to buy my submarine at Walmart. (laughs) Yeah. I don't want a brand name submarine. Look, I want to take a submarine uh, dive deeper than it was as rated by most naval activity uh, from the world over, from every naval organization, that it's just the absolute maximum safe. But I don't want to spend a whole lot of money on doing it. Can you hook me up? <laughs> Can you get me under there at like a price point that really sells home the fact that I fucking phoned it in and cheap shitted it? Can you do that? <sighs> Super. That makes me feel so much better. Just fucking insanity. And again, we're expected to be like, oh yeah, no, he's a very serious person. Extremely serious. We should definitely take that. Bill. You know, who the fuck? Like, this is the part. These things break my brain. Because the more I think about it, the more I say this shit out loud, I'm like, people were like, you have to take this guy seriously. Why? Why would I have to take this individual person seriously? This is the most ridiculous, unserious motherfucker I've ever heard. Oh, yeah, it'll be totally cool if I take you down in this fucking sub I junked together from a bunch of trash I had lying around. What? <laughs> it's like <laughs> the titanium plating or whatever. It's like Boeing was trying to get rid of that shit because some fucking idiot at the warehouse left the shit on the shelf too long. Like, they didn't use it to build planes at like, the time they were supposed to or whatever. So, you know, not only that, but also it had been clanking around, like... The only way you can move that shit is with some kind of massive forklift-like device. Every time you move that shit, it's losing value. Every time you move that shit, it's less cherry. And for it to get that old and go out of date, it would have had to get kicked around that warehouse a zillion times for some fucked-up reason. Right? Yeah. I mean, like, the whole thing is just perplexing. Like, they could have given it in a gazillion ways. It's he, was somebody somebody at work asked me today like why the fuck would they even do that I was like there's a thing like there is a mirror of this in the Soviet Union nobody's gonna want to hear this but there is a mirror of this in the Soviet Union and it's this idea there's this like underlying premise to neoliberalism and weirdly enough deep Marxism so when people are like you know like I don't want people to construe this as like I'm I'm making it like a through line that they're the same thing they're clearly not but there is this idea in liberalism of being better than God right, that is carried over into communism. And that idea, what it boils down to essentially is that, yeah, it doesn't matter what nature says, like, you can just you can just definitely cheap shit the fuck out of this. You can do it. Buddy, you're better than God. Just go ahead and have at it, pal. You can definitely pull this off. There's no way that can fuck up. Yeah. And unfortunately, as people are finding out the fucking hard way, Nature does not give a fuck about your delusions of grandeur, right? Nature doesn't care. Nature could literally not care less about how delusional you are that you're better than somebody else. So, sorry, these things are going to keep happening because uh, you're kind of being a fucking idiot right now. You know what I mean? Like, what... people, people joked about, like, oh, this should be a regular thing. Won't it, though? Like, wow. yeah. You're right. Won't it? it? Yes. The, the it answer does to that kind of seem like yes. it will. It, it has to, because, again, the hubris hasn't gone anywhere. The hubris is still exactly where it was. It hasn't left the brains. It hasn't changed. It's gonna keep happening. And that sucks shit for them, but... Oopsie doodles. We're going to see this one again. Yeah. And it's going to be just as funny. (laughs) You know, if you want to be dark, it's going to be hilarious because, because these people are going to fuck up real bad. They're going to hurt themselves real bad. And then they're going to be like, how could this happen to me? Well, it's because you're kind of a fucking idiot. 
and you're doing dumb you're doing dumb shit like you're doing dumb bitch shit and no one and no one and everybody's just a yes man so they'll just they'll let you do it bingo they will let you it's shit you know you remember what the, you remember what the, the president piss pan said right they just let <laughs> you do it they really do i want to go down in a death trap by by all means sir have fun yeah enjoy it it's gonna be a wild <laughs> fucking ride for you I'm gonna, I'm gonna social pressure an arm load of motherfuckers into paying me my asking price to do this shit. When I see them at like the fucking country club, I'm gonna be like, "You haven't been down yet, James." <laughs> like, you just, oh, you gotta go down. It's an incredible experience. You do have to like, go down there, James. It's amazing. Every fucking time that he sees somebody, like he says that shit. Yeah. It's expensive, but I know you're good for it. Yeah, it'll be. After all, after all, I know about the thing. A lot of us know about the thing, James. So you know, come down. Yeah, it's okay. Come on down. Have yourself a time. It's like South Park. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Just to get a base. Just to get a base. All right, so this has been the uh, the live stream this week. Uh, we love you all. Don't die. We have more content for you next week, as always. Also on Wednesday nights at what time? 10? 10... 10.30-ish? 10.35-ish? 10... 10.30, my friend Christopher Gadsden and Juniper Ness host the Gay Ass Podcast. No, Mindful Wellness. Sorry, that's the thing I do on Thursday nights and under a different name. Well, cat's out of the bag on that one. <laughs> That thing is so good. Like, yeah. you know, I'm only a few episodes deep, but that's like, oh. I mean, it, it's a dramatic narrative style podcast, which you really don't expect, like, when you see the title. Not when you that's see, what it is. Not when you say Dan and fucking Cohen attached. If the slow build is incredible, like, nobody's even gay yet. I know. But the sexual tension is, I mean, it's unlike anything I've ever listened to. It's a real will they, like, won't they? They will. When it, when when it gets to the really <laughs> gay ass part, mm-hmm. it you know I I worry about you know the stress that it's going to place on the production staff because you can tell that the production staff is having a wonderful time producing this contest. It's going to be so motherfucking gay, and it's awesome. Gay people rock twenty twenty. All right, we love you. Don't die. <laughs>